The Golden Boy Award, which was established by Italian newspaper Tutto Sport in 2003, is the most prestigious individual award in Europe for footballers under the age of 21. Over the years, recipients of the award have included the likes of Wayne Rooney, Lionel Messi, and Cesc Fabregas. More recently, Erling Haaland was the judge's golden boy in 2020, followed by Pedri in 2021, and the favourites this year include the likes of Jude Bellingham, Eduardo Camavinga, and Jamal Musala. It is a pretty big deal then, and a couple of years ago, I thought that it would be interesting to take a look at every 2012 Golden Boy nominee, given that they ought to have been coming into their prime in 2020. It seemed a lot of you also found it interesting, as that video got a lot of views and lots of you told me that you enjoyed it, so in a terribly sad and desperate attempt for compliments and views once again, proving emphatically that I have not grown or developed as either a person or as a YouTube creator over the last 24 months. Today I'm going to take a look at every nominee from 2014 and where they are now, given that they too really ought to be coming into their prime, aged between 26 or maybe 25 to 28, in 2022. Just before I begin, and I regret to do this as it's not really my style, but the powers that be at YouTube have instructed me to encourage you all to subscribe to the channel as we close in on 500,000 subscribers. Because, apparently, people are more likely to subscribe if you ask them when you are closing in on some kind of milestone. Honestly, the amateur psychology of these people, they must take you all for absolute fools. I do hope that they're right though, because it is high time that this channel hits half a million. I thought for sure that I would have a gold play button by now before sailing off into the sunset and retiring before turning 27. The quality of the videos, I'm sure that you will all agree, is by far the best on this platform. So, I can only assume that the algorithm is somehow conspiring or rigged against me because big tech fears that I will become so powerful that you just elect me king of the world. According to my YouTube partner person, which I can assure you all is a purely platonic relationship, only 44% of you who watch my videos are actually subscribed, despite most of you being returning viewers, and just 15% of you have notifications turned on. So, if you want to avoid the establishment's relentless attempts to suppress and cancel me, you can beat the algorithm by subscribing and turning on notifications. Right, enough of that nonsense. There were 40 nominees for the 2014 Golden Boy Award, which is absolutely loud, so I'm only going to ramble about the interesting ones, with the others being unusually terse. Here is every 2014 Golden Boy Award nominee. Where are they now? Nabil Bentaleb, Angers. A man who once had so much promise, it can't have been easy for French-born Algerian international Nabil Bentaleb joining Tottenham at the age of 17, when he barely spoke a word of English. He became a regular for Tottenham, playing 35 times in the 2014-15 season, hence his Golden Boy nomination. But he was one of many Spurs players, who Maurizio Pochettino ruthlessly cut from his squad. Ben Taleb joined Schalke in 2016, where he was told to trade on his own during the club's 2020-21 relegation season. Having not played a game in almost 12 months, Ben Taleb joined Ligue 1 side Angers last January, and aged 27 now, he was appointed club captain this summer, following Ishmael Traore's departure. Domenico Berardi, Sassuolo. A tremendously talented left-footed right winger, Domenico Berardi is effectively a one-club man, having only ever played for Sassuolo at the age of 28, though he was part-owned by Juventus for two years. That included the entirety of 2014, which was really Berardi's breakout year, and he scored a remarkable 16 goals in only 29 Serie A outings in his first season playing at that level while still in his teens. Along with his ferocious talent though, Berardi developed a reputation for being one of the so-called bad boys of Italian football, accused of bad behaviour and of lacking discipline, both on and off the football pitch. That is perhaps why Berardi is still at Sassuolo, rather than playing for a Champions League team, but he remains a star man in Serie A. He has won 24 caps for the Azzurri, 
and he was part of the Italy squad that lifted the Euros last summer. Federico Bernardeschi, Toronto FC. Sticking with Italians, purely by coincidence, as you may have noticed that we are going in alphabetical order, Federico Bernardeschi starred on loan at Crotone in the 2013-14 season, before returning to his parent club Fiorentina to make his Serie A debut. At that age, Bernardeschi looked to have the world at his feet. Quick, skillful, and capable of playing on either flank and almost anywhere in midfield, Bernardeschi joined Juventus in 2017 in a deal worth 40 million euros, where he made 183 appearances over the next five seasons. There were some real gems among those 183 appearances, but ultimately, Bernardeschi lacked the consistency and perhaps just the all-round mentality required to become a true Juventus or Italy great as some had previously hoped. Age 28, he joined MLS Outfit Toronto FC last month, where he will play alongside fellow Italians Domenico Crescito and Lorenzo Insigne. Bruma, Fenerbahce. I am already rambling too much, so I shall have to speed up. Fenerbahce Loni Bruma was born in Guinea-Boisseau, he represents Portugal, and he has played football in Portugal, Turkey, Spain, Germany, the Netherlands, and Greece, and he had done that all before he had turned 27. Now aged 27 though, Bruma, who hasn't won a Portugal cap since 2019, is currently on loan at Fenerbahce from Dutch giants PSV. Hakan Chalanoglu, Inter Milan. Turkey's great hope, who has flattered to deceive over the years, set-piece specialist Hakan Chalanoglu joined Bayer Leverkusen from Hamburg in 2014, when he was a Golden Boy nominee. He has spent the last five years playing in Italy, however, now aged 28, and after controversially leaving AC Milan to join cross-city rivals Inter Milan last summer, his old club beat his new club to their first Serie A title in 11 years. Callum Chambers, Aston Villa. One of a number of outstanding Southampton Academy graduates, over a remarkably short period of time, Callum Chambers joined Arsenal in 2014, for a potential £16 million, and won three caps for England. He hasn't added to those three caps, which he won at the age of 19, in their eight years since, as his Arsenal career was really a bit of a mixed bag. Following seven and a half years at the Emirates, which included low moves to both Middlesbrough and Fulham, Chambers departed on a permanent basis last January, joining Aston Villa on a free. Kingsley Coleman, Bayern Munich. Kingsley Coman has been touted for greatness since a very young age, and he was among the youngest 2014 Golden Boy nominees. Renowned for having won a top flight league title every season since turning professional at three different clubs, the Frenchman already has a quite frankly ludicrous trophy cabinet for a footballer of any age, let alone someone who is still only 26 years old. Coman went from contemplating retirement due to injuries in 2019 to scoring the only goal, and indeed therefore the winning goal, in the 2020 Champions League final just a year later. He also pleaded guilty to domestic violence against his ex-girlfriend Sephora Goynian in September 2017 and was fined €5,000, which is about a third of what he reportedly earns in a day. Gerard Delafeu, Udinese Currently being linked with the likes of Napoli, Roma, Villarreal, Real Sociedad, and Marseille, there have never been any doubts about Gerard Delafeu's talent. A graduate of La Masia, Delafeu spent half of 2014 on loan at Everton, and the other half on loan at Sevilla. Lightning quick and brilliant on the ball, Delafeu was Watford's star man in the 2018-19 season, and he has just enjoyed his best season yet at Udinese, hence all of the interest in him. Eric Dyer, Tottenham Hotspur. Handed a new lease of life playing in a back three under Antonio Conte, it was back in 2014 that Eric Dyer first joined Tottenham from Sporting Club de Portugal for just £4 million. Following a brilliant start, Dyer's time at Spurs has been, again, a bit of a mixed bag, and he lost his place in the England team a couple of years ago and hasn't yet regained it. Much improved playing alongside Christian Romero, there is an outside chance that Dyer could force his way back into Gareth Southgate's thinking before this winter's World Cup. 
Gianluca Gaudino, Lausanne Sport. Despite the fact that Gianluca Gaudino couldn't sound any more Italian, even if he was called Giuseppe Carbonara, he is in fact German, and his father Maurizio Gaudino won five caps for Germany whilst playing for Eintracht Frankfurt in the early 1990s. Gianluca is yet to follow in his father's footsteps on the international stage, as despite playing eight times for Bayern Munich in the 2014-15 season, he never added to that tally or represented Germany beyond under 20 level. Gaudino, who I think was the youngest 2014 Golden Boy nominee, is still only 25, and he now plays for Swiss side Lausanne Sport, who are owned by prospective Manchester United buyer Jim Ratcliffe. Matthias Ginter, Freiburg. Another German, this time with a much more German-sounding name, Matthias Ginter has been capped by Germany at senior international level, 46 times to be precise, and he had already been a part of Germany's 2014 World Cup winning squad when he was nominated for the Golden Boy Award. Named as the German national team player of the year in 2019 and in the 2019-20 Bundesliga team of the season, Ginter has spent the last five years playing for Borussia Mönchengladbach following a move there from Dortmund in 2017, but he rejoined his boyhood club Freiburg this summer, aged 28. Derli Gonzalez, Club Olympia. A brilliant diminutive wide man or forward, Derli Gonzalez is comfortably good enough to still be playing in Europe, but he chose to return to Paraguay with Club Olympia in 2020. He spent much of 2014 on loan at Olympia, where he scored nine goals in 20 games, before FC Basel paid the best part of £10 million to sign him from Benfica. At times, Gonzalez struggled with the physicality of the European game, but aged 28, he is still a star man for Paraguay's national team, and he averages better than a goal contribution every other game for Club Olympia. Julian Green, Greuter Fett. Once touted as the next great hope of the USMNT, before Christian Pulisic came along, took on that mantle, and realised it far better than Green ever could, the one-time Bayern wonder kid still plays in Germany, but in the second tier for Greuter Fett. Quick, Eager and versatile, Green represented Germany and the US at international youth level, and it was seen as a major coup for the USMNT when he accepted a call-up from them, rather than Germany, at senior level in 2014. Unfortunately for the United States, Bayern Munich, and most of all, I suppose, Green himself, a disastrous loan spell at Hamburg set his career back big time, and he has never really recovered. Age 27, Green has been with Greuter Fertz for the last five years, who were relegated from the Bundesliga last season, having won just three games all season. Pierre-Emil Hoybier, Tottenham Hotspur. You will notice that there are a lot of attacking midfielders, wingers and forwards in this list, who tend to break through and make an impression at an earlier age. Midfield anchors, destroyers and pivots can go entire careers without receiving the plaudits that they deserve, let alone at an earlier age, with them tending to break through a little later, so Pierre-Emil Hoybier is a very rare example of one to have been nominated for the Golden Boy Award. A teammate of Julian Green's at Bayern Munich at the time, unlike the American, Hoybier enjoyed much more fruitful loan spells away from Bavaria, before joining Southampton on a permanent basis in 2016. He signed for Spurs in the summer of 2020, in a deal worth £15 million, and Hoybier is now a key player at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, playing under Antonio Conte. Adnan Yanazai, free agent. Just about the only redeeming feature of Manchester United's bitterly disappointing 2013-14 campaign, as the post-Ferguson era began, as it would continue for many years at Old Trafford, Yanazai scored a brace in a 2-1 win against Sunderland on his full league debut. Unfortunately, the following summer, Yanazai didn't say thanks when I held the door open for him to the toilets of a bar in Valdelobo, and, in a rare form of cosmic justice, his career has nosedived ever since. In all seriousness, where some people think that Yanazai was all hype, I do actually think that he is very talented and ought to have achieved an awful lot more by this age. 
he is now aged 27, and having left Manchester United to join Real Sociedad in 2017, following five years in the Basque Country, the Belgian now finds himself without a club. Keita Balde, free agent. A native of Girona in Catalonia, Keita Balde was exiled from La Masia for ill discipline at the age of 15, but after scoring 47 goals in a single season, for Barcelona's satellite team, Cornea's youth side, he attracted interest from the likes of Manchester United and rivals Real Madrid. Balde ended up signing for Lazio, where he scored 31 goals in 137 games over the next four seasons. Four years at Monaco followed, two of which were spent out on loan, but Balde, now aged 27, could only manage three goals for Cagliari last season. Now a free agent, he has so far this summer been linked with moves to the likes of Valencia, Egyptian giants Al Ali, and a return to Barcelona. Mateo Kovacic, Chelsea. Born in Austria, Mateo Kovacic joined Dinamo Zagreb and relocated to Croatia at the age of only 13. 15 years on, he has now won 81 caps for his adopted home of Croatia, age 28, and his club career has been a very trophy-laden one. Kovacic has more Champions League winners' medals than the likes of Franz Beckenbauer, Ferenc Puskas, and Franco Baresi, having won the Champions League three times at Real Madrid and once at Chelsea. A fantastically well-rounded midfielder, Kovacic has wonderful technique, at age 28, you would have to say that he is one of the biggest success stories among all 40 of the 2014 Golden Boy nominees. Amerik Laporte, Manchester City. Another very successful 2014 Golden Boy nominee, Amerik Laporte became one of the most expensive defenders of all time in January 2018 when he joined Manchester City, and he has since won nine trophies in less than five years at the Etihad. Born in France, but of Basque descent, Laporte came through the youth ranks at Athletic Club, and he made the 2013-14 La Liga team of the season, aged only 19. Once arguably the most impressive uncapped footballer in the entire world, having been repeatedly overlooked by Didier Deschamps, Laporte accepted a call-up from Spain in 2019, with whom he has since won 15 caps. Lazar Markovic, Gajantep. The only 2014 Golden Boy nominee to have since played for Hull City, and therefore by far the best player in this list, Lazar Markovic was actually very good during his half-season on loan at the MKM Stadium. Signed by Liverpool from Benfica for £20 million in 2014, Markovic had a nightmare of a time at Anfield, but he proved his quality when given a run of games at a club, admittedly with slightly lower expectations, playing under Marco Silva. Age 28, Markovic returned to Serbia with his boyhood club Partizan Belgrade in 2019, and following three years back home, he recently signed for Gajantep in the Turkish Super League. Marquinhos, PSG. One of the favourites to win the 2014 Golden Boy Award, though ultimately, he would just fall short, Marquinhos was a bit of a prodigy in Brazil. Capable of playing at centre-back or in defence midfield, he made 14 appearances for Brazil at under-17 level, and his first start for Corinthians came at the age of 17. In 2013, age 19, PSG signed Marquinhos from Roma for a fee of 31.4 million euros. It has since proved to be one of the Parisians' best investments, with Marquinhos fulfilling his potential of becoming one of the best centre-backs in the world. Age 28, Marquinhos has played 366 games for PSG, putting him fourth in their all-time appearance charts, in addition to having won 69 caps for Brazil. Benjamin Mendy, Manchester City. Hmm, yeah, about that one. Benjamin Mendy was another youth team sensation, this time for Le Havre and France, and it was after Marcelo Bielsa got hold of him at Marseille that he really started to produce the kind of form that a lot of people had always felt him capable of doing at the highest level. Moves to Monaco and Manchester City followed, and Mendy was part of the France squad that won the 2018 World Cup, albeit he only played 40 minutes of football at the finals in Russia. Having been plagued by injuries ever since his move to the Etihad, 
Mendy is currently suspended by Manchester City as he stands trial for eight counts of rape, one count of attempted rape, and one count of sexual assault against eight young women. Max Meyer, Fenerbahce. One of the four favourites to win the 2014 Golden Boy Award, along with Marquinhos, the man up next, and the eventual winner who is still to come, Max Meyer, looked to be one of the brightest talents in German football in 2014. Among the youngest nominees, Meyer only turned 19 in 2014, yet he made 41 appearances for Schalke in the 2013-14 campaign. Slim and diminutive, Meyer grew up playing futsal, hence why his technical abilities are so good. By the age of 22, Meyer had already racked up 192 appearances for Schalke, but after running his contract at the club down, he found few clubs willing to meet his wage demands. Crystal Palace were one of them, so that is where Meyer went, but the move would be a disaster. Now aged 26, he is currently contracted to Fenerbahce, though he spent the second half of last season on low with Midland in Denmark, which also didn't go great. Arkadusz Milik, Marseille. It's easy to see why Arkadusz Milik was the second favourite to win the 2014 Golden Boy Award, given that he made 11 goal contributions from just nine starts on loaded Ajax during the first half of the 2014-15 campaign. He ended that season with 23 goals, and he bettered that tally following a permanent move to Ajax the following season. Now aged 28, Milik suffered a horrible couple of injuries in 2016 and 2017, and though he remains unfortunately very injury prone, he can still be lethal when fit, having scored 20 goals in 37 games for Marseille last season. Alexander Mitrovic, Fulham. I cannot stand the way in which Alexander Mitrovic plays the game, forever whining at officials and going to ground easier than Neymar despite being an absolute unit, but I have always stuck up for his talents as a centre forward. Because, you know, I am relentlessly good faith and do not let my personal disdain for the way in which someone plays the game cloud my judgement about their talents. It was long said that Mitrovic was too good for the championship, but not good enough for the Premier League, particularly following his difficult 2020-21 campaign, but I have always maintained that if you play him often and play even remotely to his strengths, he will hit double figures for any team in the Premier League. So far this season, Mitrovic, who was at Anderlecht in 2014 and found his way to Fulham via Newcastle United, has done his best to prove me right, with three goals from his first three Premier League matches. He's also bagged a tremendous 46 goals from 74 caps for Serbia, and I would suggest that he is among the biggest success stories out of all of the 2014 nominees. Munir El Hadidi, Sevilla. A talented and versatile forward, Munir El Hadidi was born in Spain but represents Morocco, and whilst he was with Barcelona in 2014, he now plays for Sevilla. Yes, that is it for that one. I said that I would have to be quick with some players, and I wasted loads of time being self-indulgent with my own views on Alexander Mitrovic that most of you probably could not care less about. Sol Niguez, Atletico Madrid. Sol Niguez's career has been one of ups and downs, as he bounced back from being let go by Real Madrid to become one of the brightest young players in Spanish football with bitter rivals Atletico. Following seven seasons as a starman for Atletico, Sol is now facing a bit of a lower ebb once again, with the club supposedly keen to get him off the wage bill following a disappointing loan spell at Chelsea last season. Among the most complete players on the planet, even if he is perhaps a bit of a jack of all trades and a master of none, the 27-year-old is currently being linked with a move to Juventus as a replacement for the injured Paul Pogba. Nikola Ninkovic, free agent. Another free agent, Nikola Ninkovic was starring for Partizan Belgrade back in 2014 and looked to be destined for the bright lights of one of Europe's big five leagues. Sure enough, he joined Genoa in 2016, followed by Ascoli and then Brescia. Unfortunately, none of Ninkovic's moves have been particularly successful, and in October 2020, he was involved in a serious car accident which sidelined him for more than nine months. Ninkovic 
returned to action last season, making 17 appearances for Proleta Novi Sad as they finish bottom of the Serbian Superliga. Lucas Acampos, Sevilla. Signed by Monaco for 11 million euros in 2012, having just turned 18, whilst Monaco were still in the second tier of French football, but were spending big in an attempt to return to Ligue 1, Lucas Acampos was tipped for big things from a very young age. And there was at least one edition of the Football Manager series where he turned into a serial Ballon d'Or winner. That hasn't quite materialised in real life, but Acampos has still had a very good career, having just entered his fourth season with Sevilla. Divock Origi, AC Milan. Among the most unusual careers in this list, Divock Origi has gone from bona fide wonder kid in his teens to a meme and supposed flop during his early years at Liverpool before becoming a cult hero and serial trophy winner. Origi was never a consistent starter at Anfield, but key goals against the likes of Everton, Arsenal, and most famously of all, FC Barcelona, ensure that he will always be an icon among the red side of Merseyside. This summer, Origi joined Italian champions AC Milan, where he will hope to be the main man up front, with the exception of the seven games this season, in which Zlatan Ibrahimovic is likely to be fit. Dennis Pratt, Leicester City. One of a number of players linked with the move away from the King Power Stadium earlier this summer, now it looks as though Dennis Pratt is going to stick around. A teammate of Alexander Mitrovic at Anderlecht back in 2014, and one of his most frequent providers, Pratt joined Leicester from Sampdoria in 2019 for 20 million euros, but he is yet to show his best football in the Premier League. Adrian Rabio, Juventus. A very public transfer target of Manchester United's only a week or so ago, up until some pretty severe backlash from supporters and reportedly obscene wage demands, Adrian Rabio's career has fallen into a bit of a rut. Signed by Juventus from PSG in 2019, there have never been too many doubts about the Frenchman's ability, only his attitude. And that is why Juve were reportedly all too willing to get him off their wage bill earlier this summer. Sandro Ramirez, Uesca. I have said about so many players in this list that they either are or were phenomenally talented, so in order to avoid sounding like a broken record, I will say that I never thought Sandro Ramirez was that good, certainly not good enough, to make it at Barcelona, even if a series of injuries have hardly helped. A fantastic workmanlike professional and a good athlete with decent technique, Ramirez is good enough to play in La Liga, just perhaps not the Champions League. A miserable signing by Everton in 2017, even for only £5 million, Ramirez is currently contracted to Uesca, though he spent last season on loan with Girona. Luke Shaw, Manchester United. Not many players in this list had played as many games as Luke Shaw by the end of 2014, despite the fact that a number of them were older than him. Shaw played 67 times for Southampton and represented England at a World Cup at the age of 18, hence why Manchester United made him the most expensive teenager of all time that summer in a deal worth £30 million. Shaw famously suffered a horrendous injury the following year, and his career has been a mixed bag, I think largely, because of that setback. Now aged 27, he is still at Manchester United, where he has played more than 200 games, and it must be said that he was excellent for England at last summer's Euros. Raheem Sterling, Chelsea. The favourite to win the 2014 Golden Boy Award, Raheem Sterling deservedly won that accolade, fresh off the back of an outstanding season at Liverpool. Aged 18 to 19, Sterling hit double figures alongside Luis Suarez and Daniel Sturridge in the 2013 14 season, featuring in a whopping 38 games. It was the start of a sensational career, which has seen Sterling transfer for what was a record fee for an Englishman, lift four Premier League titles at Manchester City, and become, in my view at least, an England legend. By the time that he retires, Sterling will be one of England's all-time record appearance holders, possibly among England's all-time top scorers, and one of the finest footballers that this country, admittedly with a helping hand from Jamaica, has ever produced.
well, I suppose if we do want to be pedantic, it was Jamaica that produced Sterling in the sense that he was born there. So we'll go with one of the finest players that this country has ever helped to nurture. John Stones, Manchester City. Repeatedly written off following an enormous transfer and some silly mistakes at Man City, John Stones eventually proved his critics wrong. A brilliant ball-playing centre-back, formerly of Barnsley and Everton, Stones has played 197 times in an awe-inspiring Manchester City side, and he has already won almost 60 caps for England at the age of 28. Oliver Torres, Sevilla. Not one, not two, but three of the 40 strong shortlist for the 2014 Golden Boy Award now play their club football for Sevilla. Which got me thinking, where would a squad made up of every 2014 Golden Boy nominee finish in, let's just say, for the sake of argument, the Premier League? It would be a bloated squad, no doubt. Benjamin Mendy would not be much use at all, and you would have to give them a goalkeeper, but I reckon that they would be in and around the top six. Better than Manchester United, probably worse than Spurs. That's my verdict, but I would love to hear all of your, no doubt, much more educated and lucid thoughts in the comments. Oliver Torres, meanwhile, joined Sevilla from Porto in 2019, and he is as yet uncapped by Spain, age 27, despite winning 24 caps for the country's under-21s. Tony Vilhena, Salernitana. One of the most notable downfalls in this list, Tony Vilhena won 15 caps for the Netherlands between 2016 and 2018, as one of the Eredivisie star men playing for Feyenoord but he hasn't won a single cap since 2018, and he now plays for Serie A relegation candidates Salernitana on loan from Espanyol, a willing runner with a brilliant long shot who can play in either central or defensive midfield. Vilhena was nominated for the Golden Boy Award in 2014, having already won the under-17 Euros twice with the Netherlands in 2011 and 2012. Jethro Willems, Groetefert, Making it consecutive Dutch inclusions, it's also slightly unusual that Greuther Fert of the second Bundesliga have two current players in this list. Jethro Willems won 22 caps for the Netherlands between the ages of 18 and 22, but none since then, now aged 28. Once a key man at Eintracht Frankfurt and at PSV, Willems joined Greuther Fert in 2021, having been briefly linked with a return to Newcastle United. Luka Zahovic, Pogon Stetten. Probably the least known 2014 Golden Boy nominee, both in 2014 and now, Luka Zahovic might look a bit out of place in this list, but he was nominated for the Golden Boy Award, having made an impression as a teenager for Maribor in the Champions League. Born in Portugal and the son of Slovenian legend Zlatko Zahovic, following an unsuccessful move to Heer and Vane in 2015, Zahovic returned to Maribor and scored 46 goals in 86 games over the next three years. He now plays for Pogonstetin in the top flight of Polish football. Kurt Zuma, an RSPCA education course. Our final inclusion, at long last, and we can say with some certainty, I think, that I failed in my quest for brevity once again, is, by virtue of his surname starting with a Z, West Ham United centre-back, Kurt Zuma. A very good centre-back who absolutely hates cats, I actually do think that Zuma's form has somewhat tailed off since that scandal. Tailed off. <laughs> Signed by Chelsea in 2014, having already become a regular at St Etienne, Zuma joined West Ham for just shy of £13 million last summer, and he is a key man for the Hammers. So, that is it for today's video. Apologies for that terrible, uh, tail gag there. I promise that was unintentional. Uh, I wouldn't have included it otherwise. Thank you all, as I say, very much as of for watching. I hope that you enjoyed today's video, a lengthy one, I know. Hit the like button if you did enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and go on and subscribe and turn on notifications as HITC7s continues in its relentless quest for 500,000 subscribers. You can also find me on Twitter or on Instagram via the username at HITC7s on both, should you wish to do so. Cheers. Have a brilliant day.